of choice. Even though the environment will exert a force on you, who you ultimately become is your choice. Like those ten Israelites. Ten came back with a bad attitude. But there were only two in the camp. That said, we have a different spirit. Friends, let me try and connect these two to you. Hallelujah. Please, I know that kids are doing what they are doing, but please listen because God wants to change people's lives this morning. You have already said, I can't do this because of this, because that's a lie. If you can just keep looking at me, don't worry, just keep looking because I want to talk about it. Friends, in any life, five years, four years, yeah, three years, yeah, we are influenced by our environment. Do you not choose your environment? Yeah? Did you choose your mother and your father? Who you chose your father and your mother? Anybody? Did you choose something in water? Did you choose something in the uh, uh, Street? You didn't choose. Did you choose? Did you choose? So what I'm saying is that in any year, if you, you know, your environment has got that on you in any year. But as your age goes higher, so your options grow bigger. You don't have to die in the environment you were born in. You began to get, get more control over your life. In adult years, yeah? Keep looking at me, hallelujah. In adult years, your life, your choices, becomes the most dominant factor in your life. Now, I want everyone to look at me, hallelujah. Anyone over 40. Your face or your beauty is no longer a genetic factor. You remember those that say, oh, he was born ugly. Uh, once you go as a, a grown little bit, it doesn't become a genetic factor, it becomes a choice factor. Look at me, please. If every day you wake up and you are always grumpy, squeezing your face like this. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. You keep on doing that. In a few years, you will develop some wrinkles here that will make you so old. Because of the way you are allowed choices to be. But if you wake up in the morning and say, I don't care what is going on in my environment, hallelujah. I'm going to bless the name of the Lord, hallelujah. I don't care if anybody loves you, hallelujah. I'm going to exalt the name of God, hallelujah. Friends, you now become in charge of the way you look. You have a child on how you make your life. You can begin to have a different attitude about your outlook. And say to yourself, even though I was born in the ghetto, I'm not going to die in the ghetto. Hallelujah. Even though I was born in a peace, hallelujah, I'm going to arrive, hallelujah. Even though my father was an adulterer, hallelujah, but I am not going to be an adulterer, hallelujah. Even though I was born as a woman, hallelujah, but I am going to keep on the good, hallelujah. Somebody say, hallelujah. 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 You don't have to die in your environment you were born in. 
I was a wise man. All of this. My friend, listen to me, brother. It's a, it's a man's It's only in your mind. You have got things to change your own life. I realized one thing many years ago that God has called me for a unique ministry. God hasn't called me to be a better of people. I don't pet people. My calling is a very powerful calling. Let me tell you something. So with my calling comes controversy. Comes accusation. Comes hatred. It's a package. So I'm used to it now. Whether I like it or not, people will say bad things about me. That's how it is. But I'm not going to let that change me. I'm not going to let that affect my attitude. Hallelujah. I went to pray in a, in a conference. Actually, they asked me to pray for one second. One second, yeah? And I prayed for one second. And the Holy Ghost came mightily in the room. Powerfully. They all began to shake and fear. All the big guys got together and said, I will speak to you as can call me. Into this room. Pastor William, we know that you got something special about you. Take it easy. Turn it down. And I said, what? I only pray for one second. You have to help me preach. Or cast out devil. I said to them, Bye bye. bye. I don't belong to this group. You know what, friends? What God has given to me. No one, no woman, no boy, no man can take it away from me. My attitude is about how to move for the kingdom of God. Nobody will stop me. Hallelujah. Some of you are here this morning. You want hear a little word of discouragement? Go in your window. I'm not going to church anymore. I'm not going to pray anymore. I'm not going to pray anymore. Friends, look at me here. Hallelujah. Your attitude and how you respond in the days of crisis will show the kind of person you are in the day of blessing. Unfortunately, crisis will come. At the radio station where I am, the first time I went there, there was rock and roll in the station. And the guy asked me, What are you going to play? And there was a telling good music. I can't, I can't compromise. He said, What are you going to call your show? I said to him, I am a pastor. Every music I play is a Christian music. I said, Not just Christian music, but music that will bless people. He said, That's the first. Today, I've got two radio stations. They can't wait to hear my program. As a matter of fact, I've got some copy. If you want to get a copy, just come to Sir Stephanie. I can give you a copy of the program that I do on a Tuesday. Oh, well, people are being taught. Because my attitude is a different attitude. Friends, this morning, you know, I have seen many things in my Christian life. I want to please listen to me here. Yeah, look at me here. Yeah, just look at me. Don't let anybody disturb you. Amen. Hallelujah. A few months ago, I was preaching in a, in a city called Perth. In Western Australia. I was ministering from here to here. It was a powerful meeting. Just before I left, I had to go on a trip. 
And for one reason or the other, we don't know what happened. Our finances wasn't there. We don't know what happened. So I started preaching that meeting. Hallelujah. And I remember I was going to the airport. And the pastor came up to me. He knelt and said, Man of God. He said, Get up, get up, don't do that. He said, Can I tell you something? He said, our lives, our families, our church have changed forever. He had a big envelope. And he gave it to me. 